Okay, welcome back everyone in this episode, um, episode eight, I believe, maybe nine. Uh, we're going to be just continuing our battle. So the first thing we're going to end up doing is let's update our UI, our monster UI, because we can now attack, but it doesn't seem to update, right? So let's go into our script and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is a ready function, as always. And what we're going to do first is we're actually going to await one second or one minute. Um, the reason is because we don't want the uh, UI to update immediately as everything is kind of loading in. Because here we also wait for the uh, player's thing to spawn, right? So we kind of want everything to kind of pop in once, uh, one at a time, essentially. Now, again, it's up to you. You can spawn everything at the same time. You can wait longer. You can do two seconds, three seconds, whatever you'd like. But I found one second to be kind of nice. Next, we're going to take our HP. Here we go, the progress bar. Let's actually name this HP bar. And then go over here. Drag it in and say the max value is going to be equal to the enemy.getChild. So we can actually just drag it in like that. Dot health. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for the value, so we're going to set the value. And now when I play, it should default to zero or to um, 10, essentially. So 10, 10, and the progress bar will go full. Now, that lag is because of the one second. However, as you remember, um, that won't matter because here it's kind of loading in, right? There was, you could see it for a second. Maybe you could uh, decrease it to 0 0.5. And let's see what this looks like. And yeah, so you can adjust it to whatever you'd like. I'm going to leave it at one uh, second just so it's consistent with my reference. But again, you can adjust it to whatever you like. All right, now let's add a process function to update our um, enemies thing, right? Or HP and everything. So this is pretty easy. All we have to do is just take the value and put that there and just update it, right? Now, I also want to update the text, though. So here we can say get the text, the HP text, HP text. Good thing I dragged that in. We're going to make it equal to the string value of the enemy's health. OK, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now we're also going to take, take our info.text. Now here we want to update the, um, the name. Now the reason why we're doing this in the process function is because if the enemy changes, we want to be able to update it. Now if it doesn't change, we can just put in the ready function, but again, it's really up to you. Um, in fact, I could honestly just put in the ready function because actually um, in this course, we're not going to be doing multiple monsters. But now all we have to do is say, monster plus string of the name, right? So the enemy dot name plus a level, we'll say level and the enemy's level. And that's it. So now let's play and see what we get. Now we got level one with 20 HP. Now we can also, um, let's actually, let's put it in here because I want it to update right away instead of the timer. But now we have level two, Tony, and what we can do is we have level two. Let's put a space in between that. And then let's go over here and move this HP text maybe right there. And we'll take the, HP, the bro progress bar under it. So we'll have the HP text in the front and let's play again. All right, there we go. And there's our uh, 20 health. We could also um, make a variable. What we can do is say max health. And what we can do is we can say max health is equal to the enemy health. And then this allows us to save the initial value of the health. Okay. And then in the health text, we can say plus this guy and then plus string max health. Now what we'll have is a 20 out of 20. And that null was there because it was uh, waiting. All right, and that's pretty much it. Um, in fact, actually, we can put this before the await. And now, oh, no, that's why. Um, so we actually have to await. 
um, because what's happening is our enemy doesn't exist and we're trying to add it in the ready function. So we have to make sure that we do await at least like 0.1 seconds or one, se one minute in this case, or one second, sorry. So we have to actually have this after, my apologies. We could actually just do 0.5, I'm gonna do it 0.5 and let's see, let's take a look. And yeah, that's it. Our player spawns in, we fight, we blast, Boom, it goes. Let's actually speed up that attack. Let's go to our, our pink mon over here. Let's go to the attack and make sure that this says 15 FPS and 15. And the capture, we're going to have to do that later. The spawn looks good. I'm great. All right, now let's go over here one more time. Play. Here we go. We're going to fight, blast, and it attacks. And it's in a loop. So let's actually go over here and take off the loop over here. So make sure that the loop is off on animated animation looping. It is off. Now let's play one more time. Make sure everything's working fine. Let's fight, blast, and boom, it went. Now let's actually do the monster attack in this video. Let's actually do the monster attack in this video. And then the next one, we'll make sure that the other things work. So um, switch will work and Lee already kind of works, but we'll also do capture at some point. All right, let's go to our battle and work on the monster turn. Now, for the monster turn, how is this going to work? First, we need to hide all the menu, the menu options. That's pretty simple to understand. We just have to hide them, and now the player can't do anything. The player can't select anything because they're all hidden. Now, we want to create a random damage variable by saying var damage is equal to randy range from 10 to 15. Now this will allow us to pick a random damage number between 10 and 15. Now you can always do this in the um, pink mon as well. You could maybe have a damage multiplier or something like that. Maybe you could multiply it by the level. It's up to you. I would urge you to be creative in terms of level, um, but this is how I'm gonna keep it. Now we're gonna await two seconds. Now the reason for this is so that it kind of looks like the player is thinking. In fact, what we can do so we can go to our action bar and say dot text enemy is thinking there we go and then we'll wait two seconds to make it seem as if, if as if it's thinking obviously it's not but that's how we're gonna make it look so now we're gonna say if the enemy dot get child is smaller than or equal to zero now we'll just end the level or end the game or the battle. So first we'll say add the XP from our game and then we'll pause the tree or unpause the tree and then we're just going to queue free our battle. And that's it. That's how we'd end the battle, right? Next comes the actual damaging. Now this one is easy because the pink mon is consistent amongst the enemy and the player. It's the same scene. So we can just say player dot get child selected the first one or whichever player the select has selected dot hit last and damage. So the monster is going to be doing blast. Now, of course, if you want to have a random match function um, that picks either blast or some other attacks, you can totally do that. But I'm going to make it so that the player always does blast. Okay, or the enemy always does blast. All right, now here we're going to update our action bar. So we're going to say action.text is equal to enemy. The name has attacked using blast for um, damage, string damage HP. Okay, now that's pretty simple. Next, we have to actually update our HP. We have to actually subtract the HP from our Dokimon, the Dokimon from the player. And we do that by saying game dot selected Dokimon zero health minus equals damage. Okay, that is it. That is it for the player, the, the monster. And then we wait two more seconds, okay, before we show the menu. Now, what we can do is show the menu, but also grab focus. So make sure I have this right. Let's go over here, menu, fight. We'll grab the focus of our fight. And now if I play, Let's see if this works. So let's play, fight, blast. My action bar disappears. It says enemy is thinking, oh, the enemy attacked me. And it says enemy has attacked for 14 HP and it did attack me for 14 HP. And now let's attack one more time. Enemy is thinking and it died. 
Of course, we can do this check before, so we can actually have this after. Instead, um, we can, that way this will also pretty much go instantly. So let's try one more time and see what we get. Fight, blast, I did 13 HP to me. Fight, blast, and it's gone immediately. Now, of course you can do, um, I would kind of, I would urge to have uh, at least a one second timer, just because you could see that it's immediate, the battle ends immediately, and that's not really what we want when we make a game. It's not very attractive, but of course it's up to you and how you want to design your game. Okay, that is it for this video. Um, if you guys liked it, subscribe, like, and share, and I will see you guys in the next video where we will be implementing the capture and I think maybe the switch. We'll do, we might do switch first. All right, I'll see you guys next time.